Welcome to In the Heartbeat, coming to you from the studio of WMTV Channel 5 in Gross Point Farms at the Gross Point War Memorial. We are also broadcast on AT&T U-verse on Channel 99. I'm Dr. David Bali, and I'm your host for In the Heartbeat. As many of you know, there are many crime dramas on television today with a highlighted role and emphasis on forensic pathology. The forensic pathologist is often the star of the show, using special tests and technology to solve an important mystery. Well, my special guest today is a forensic pathologist in real life. He is world-renowned with a name that you may recognize, and he truly is a star in real life, and he happens to live in our own backyard. I'm so proud to introduce to you Dr. Warner Spitz. Dr. Thank Spitz. Thank you very much. Welcome to In a Heartbeat. Thank you. Dr. Spitz, what I'd like to do to start out for our viewers, um, uh, although I, I uh, know your storied career, I'd like to give our viewers a little bit about your background just so they, that they may be aware of some of those things, a few of them. <coughs> um, Dr. Spitz received his medical training at uh, Geneva University Medical School in Switzerland and he also the Hebrew University Hadassah Medical School in Jerusalem, Israel. He is professor of pathology at Wayne State University of School of Medicine and adjunct professor of toxicology at the University of Windsor in Canada. He is certified by the American Board of Pathology in Anatomic and Forensic Pathology and he's the author of over 96 scientific publications and he has served on various committees investigating the assassinations of President John F. Kennedy and Martin Luther King. He has testified in numerous high visibility cases in this country and abroad. He testified as expert witness in the Mary Jo Kopechny, Ted Kennedy, Chappaquiddick case and for the Goldman family in the wrongful death lawsuit against O.J. Simpson. He was also involved in the Jenny Jones trial and many others. He was also consulted with the Boulder, Colorado Police regarding the John Benet Ramsey case. And more recently, as you may be aware, he testified in the Philip Spector case in California and in the Casey Anthony trial in Florida. In addition to that, he's received numerous awards and accolades, which are probably too many to go into, otherwise they would take up all of our show. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, Dr. Spitz, I'd like to start out by asking you, um, how did you come to uh, come to the United States, and what what happened when you got here? Well, I uh, <clears throat> came to the United States to look around. To everybody was talking. Everybody in medicine that I knew was talking about uh, how great medicine is in America and uh, the education in forensic pathology is unequaled to any other place that anybody could suggest. And I was after my training in medicine. In fact, I had done seven years of forensic pathology already. So uh, I decided I'm going to go to America and look and see what goes on here. And uh, the consul who I knew, the American consul, who was, was going to issue the visa, said to me, don't take a visitor's visa, take an immigration visa. If you don't like it, you don't need to stay, you can go back. And I had a grant for one year to come here, every, all expenses paid, if I come back after one year. My boss wouldn't sign it, because he <laughs> said, you're not coming back. <laughs> and I said, why do you say that? And he said, well, I know that you're not going to come back, because America will attract you. And he was right. I came here, and after three weeks, I decided to stay. And the law indicated at that time, and maybe still does, that if you come here on the wrong visa, you have to leave the country for two years and go to the country of your origin. So I had to leave because I came on the wrong visa. And uh, it's not like going to, uh, to uh, coming in here from Mexico. Where you can, like today, you jump the wall and you're in. But at that time, I had to fill a quarter of an inch form that uh, um, asked about all kind of strange questions. 
And Dr. Spitz, when you came here, you <coughs> first were in Maryland, is that right? I was in Maryland for um, 12 years, all told. And you were sharing with me a wonderful story about how you were looking for the, the office of the coroner, was it? Yes. The, uh, the, uh, the, uh, I worked at the office of the medical examiner, State of Maryland medical examiner, and I worked there for about 12 years. And w explain for our viewers the differences that you saw from when you were in Europe versus when you came to Maryland. Well, in uh, foreign countries, in actually most, if not all of Europe that I'm aware of, uh, the medical exam there is no medical examiner. It's a forensic pathology who works for the police and is attached to the university, to the medical school. It's within the confines of the medical school. They are not pathologists. They are people who are trained in forensic pathology without the underlying mother, mother specialty, which is general pathology. In this country, you have to be a pathologist. And that's a great point, Dr. Spitz. Could you explain uh, for our viewers a little bit about what is the difference between a pathologist and a forensic pathologist? A pathologist works in a hospital. A pathologist looks at tissues and body fluids and uh, makes a diagnosis. That diagnosis goes into the medical records and the clinicians treat the patient according to what the pathologist determined from a biopsy. Like a woman goes in, she has a lump in the breast, and she goes to the doctor, and the doctor says, we need a biopsy. The pathologist does the biopsy, or anywhere else in the body. Uh, uh, fluids are taken, tissues are taken, and examined by the pathologist. If someone dies, then the pathologist will do an autopsy if he's given permission by the next of kin. If he is not given, no, no autopsy will take place. Um, the uh, <clears throat> forensic pathologist does autopsies primarily. The forensic pathologist knows how to do autopsies because he's already done the training in, in general pathology. He does not examine biopsies unless there is a litigation in progress where there's a question about is this this or is it that in the biopsy. But usually when we talk about criminal cases, that is not an issue. Where, uh, he does an autopsy and he doesn't need the permission of the next of kin because he operates under, the, uh, under state law. State law gives him blanket permission to make a determination of when he thinks, he or she thinks, that an autopsy is necessary. And then he will go ahead and do one. He determines, he or she determines, and he, and he or she turns around and does the autopsy. And Dr. Spitz, could you also explain for us, please, the difference between a coroner and a medical examiner? A coroner is an appointee uh, from the old days in England, it actually started as the crowner. He would go around in the name of the crown and confiscate monies <laughs> from people who owed monies. And if necessary, because there was need for a, somebody to determine whether this was an accident or a suicide or natural causes or, acts or a murder maybe, he makes the determination of whether it's a homicide, suicide, natural causes, or accident. And that played into uh, how much money would be available for the Crown to receive from whoever is the guilty party here. The uh, uh, medical examiner does the exact same thing. Only the medical examiner has the necessary training. The, the coroner, which is a change in the name from Crowner in this country brought with the pilgrims when they first came here. That was brought from England and is now practiced in America. But the, usually the uh, medical examiner is a physician who is specialized after many years of training, like um, to be a forensic pathologist, a board certified forensic pathologist, you need to do four years of training in, an, uh, in uh, pathology and then another year of training in forensic pathology. Following four years of college and four years of medical school. <laughs> yes. It's a lot of years. That's correct. Yes. D Dr. Spitz, there are a couple of other terms that I think you could also clarify for us. Uh, 
COD or cause of death versus manner of death? Cause of death, cause of death is the medical reasons for the death. That can be a gunshot wound of chest, uh, stab wound of uh, bell of the stomach of the abdomen, um, pneumonia, meningitis. Those are causes of death. Uh, you could say, well, he didn't die of the stab wound, he died of the bleeding. Okay, bleeding from uh, stab wound, bleeding from um, uh, chest wound, uh, from a, a um, gunshot wound, etc. Or multiple injuries from a traffic accident. The manner of death is homicide, suicide, natural causes, or accident. Somebody with a big hole in his head that can be a self-inflicted, that can be an accident, that can be a homicide. The only thing it cannot be is natural causes. Yes, yes. Uh, Dr. Spitz, you were mentioning in one of our conversations that when you first came to the United States and you were in Maryland, you were somewhat surprised by the number of deceased people that you saw in the medical examiner's uh, office, weren't you? Well, let me tell you, I came here uh, like a babe out of the forest. Uh, I did not know what to expect. I came with a cab to the medical examiner's office on a Monday morning because I had arrived here on Friday and the office was uh, uh, probably closed, but it wasn't closed. They work 24-7. And uh, uh, I told the cabbie to take me to the medical examiner's office and he didn't know that that thing even existed. So he said, what do they do over there? I said, they do autopsies. Oh, he said, you mean the monk. <laughs> and he took me to the most dilapidated part of Baltimore. And there was this dilapidated building. And at that time, the concept was, oh, well, these are physicians, all right, but they work with dead people, and dead people don't notice whether it's dilapidated or not, so they didn't fund it. They funded it very poorly, and it was a very nasty area and a very nasty looking building, but now it is very, <laughs> now it is wonderful. It's a nice building, and it's a 